VA Communications was bought out by other Canadian operations were bought out by Rogers. Right. And in the meantime, we as consumers and as riders on the, on the subway, we can't access this, our phones, our cell phone service on the subway because of this contract and we can't see the terms of the contract. So is that a fair summary of where we're at? BAI Communications offered for all big three to sign on and use their infrastructure to share on the infrastructure. The big three refused. They cited capacity constraints on the existing infrastructure. It is on the 4G standard, not on the latest 5G standard, uh, but we don't really know how valid their concerns are. So the opportunity for universal coverage for all providers was given many years ago under BEAI, um, but these, the big three really prefer to own and operate their own infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you. We're at time. Thank you so much for your presentation, for being here again, and for the work of TTC Riders. We appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to be moving to Zoom. Our next presenter is present. Okay. So we have Patty Coates from the OFL. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Please you. Tell us about yourself. And yes. uh, you've got five minutes. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, my name is Patty Coates, and I'm the president of the Ontario Federation of Labor. The OFL is the largest provincial labor federation in Canada. It represents 54 unions and over 1 million workers. And I'm pleased to join this hearing today because it addresses an urgent cost of living issue that affects all Ontarians. In today's economy, all workers need affordable and reliable access to the internet and cell phone service, no matter where they live or their field of work. <clears throat> it has become an essential service for education, healthcare, information, safety, and security. Not to mention the day-to-day -day communication with co-workers, family, and friends. During the pandemic, it allowed so many aspects of our lives to continue when we could no longer gather in public together and help close the gap between so many regions of our province. Indeed, I am joining you here today virtually, but only because I have a reliable internet that allows for my uninterrupted participation in this discussion. Unfortunately, too many Ontarians lack access to this basic service, and some Ontarians are harder hit than others. Those who live in Northern communities, rural parts of Ontario, or Indigenous communities, where service is spotty, intermittent, and unpredictable. And we need standards, like we have for healthcare and other public services, that would guarantee a similar high standard in every part of the province, no matter where anyone lives. Likewise, we need the same kind of affordable and reliable access to cell phone service without being gouged by the cell phone and internet providers. Private communication giants who consistently put their profits ahead of our needs. Ontarians and Canadians in general pay among the highest cell phone bills in the world. And this is completely unacceptable, especially in the midst of a worsening cost of living crisis. The needs of workers and their families to use these services shouldn't be a reason to see massive record-breaking profits for the telecommunications corporation. The opposite is true. High quality, affordable, and reliable internet access and cell phone service should be and could be guaranteed by providing them through a wholly owned public service. These essential services should be available more widely at a fraction of the cost as a publicly owned and operated service. When the very first electrical grids were introduced in jurisdictions across Canada, it largely required their organization and delivery through public means in order to guarantee equal access and high quality of service to every user and to create the optimal conditions for a thriving and competitive economy. In some cases, this public utility remains in public hands, but in other instances, it has been privatized, and the predictable result has been high cost, less reliable service, and unequal access. Just as the OFL calls for the public ownership, um, organization, and delivery of other services and utilities, we likewise support 
at the same call for the internet and telecommunications in Ontario. As long as profit making is the central and near exclusive impetus of internet and cell phone service delivery, everything else suffers affordability, access, and reliability. We therefore make the following recommendations. To launch a study into the viability of providing internet access and telecommunications as a public utility. Develop a legislative program that in the interim would re-regulate internet and cell phone service delivery in Ontario and create minimal guaranteed standards for rapidly improved access and quality in regions and communities in Ontario that currently lack it and create a consumer's bill of rights with respect to telecommunication services that would clearly demonstrate our, our shared expectations for affordable, accessible, and reliable internet and cell phone service in every region of Ontario. These recommendations are not without precedent. They are based on actual and historical legislative success in Ontario and other jurisdictions that have regulated and or brought up under public ownership and control these utilities that are central to the functioning of our economies, government and communities. We are so grateful to the official opposition for raising this urgent but far too long neglected issue because we we rely so heavily on the internet and cell phone service in our day-to-day -day lives. We sometimes lack the imagination that their organization and delivery could be different than they are now. But the price gouging and the profit making that Ontario consumers have experienced for far too long, not to mention the unreliable, unaffordable and unequal access to now broken have bro now broken our willingness to accept the status quo. And we say enough is enough. Let's seize this opportunity to contemplate bold and ambitious solutions to this question, which could make life more affordable, reliable, and equitable for everyone in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation and thank you so much uh, for the work of uh, OFL uh, under your leadership uh, in advocating for the rights of workers and all Ontarians. Uh, much, much appreciated. Um, we will move now to questions. We have a shortened question uh, period. Uh, anyone would like to begin? Okay, so Patty, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for your deputation. You've got a couple of recommendations. You're talking about a wholly owned public service. And in Ontario for 90 years, or, or actually almost 100 years, we had public hydro. And it provided low cost for the most part until it started to be broken up and privatized. It provided low cost, reliable service to everyone in Ontario. And what we've got with the rollout of the internet and the cell phone service across this province is because it's all run by private se the private sector, there's no profitability in rural remote communities. And so they have either no service or very unreliable service or very high cost service. So is it the Ontario hydro model that you're proposing that we have something like that, but for internet and cell phone service? What we believe is that this should be a public service. It, we know that when there is profit, uh, at the profit needs are higher than the consumer needs. And we all know I live in a rural area and I don't have the, the, the uh, fiber um, optics. I, you know, I've had for years and years up until just a few years ago, like somebody else said earlier, I've had, I had to go to a certain um, wall in my home to be able to get cell service. Um, internet, um, when I was with one of the big um, telecommunications company, um, I wasn't getting the, you know, the service that I was paying for. And they would say, oh, well, there's, you know, hundreds of people on that same line. Uh, and so, you know, we're not getting what we pay for. And we pay the highest costs um, in the world. I have friends in the States that pay almost nothing, you know, $40 for cell phone service that similar to what I get um, and same with the internet uh, service. And, you know, I think it's really important. We saw through the pandemic, 
when people started using Zoom more to communicate um, through the internet. And, and we you know, represent members and, and meet with members all across Ontario. We saw that in, in many of the rural communities and Northern communities, but also in Toronto, if you lived in an apartment building, your service at, uh, many times were interrupted. And I think when we take we have profit out of out of the system and the needs um, of the people are put forward first, we would have a better system. Thank you very much. Um, we're just wrapping up with time, but uh, we have heard uh, your words very loud and clear about um, other options, including that of a public. And uh, one last comment uh, in, in out west in. Saskatchewan, they do have a public model or a public option there as well. And uh, we've heard that uh, private um, telecom uh, have similar, so they offer similar programs that they're offering here in terms of um, data, cell, cell, build, um, cell coverage, um, cell plans actually. And the same plans are being offered out west where you have a competitor that's public as an offering um, at a lesser cost as well you know out west um, some of the uh, things that we've heard from telecom about local uh, rural communities that it's very difficult and expensive to, to put access out there but in a province where you have a public provider uh, there seems to be uh, better access at least uh, from from my research at this point any comments on that um i I live in a, a rural area and I've watched it grow. When I moved here 30 years ago, there was only one subdivision. Now there are, are multiple, multiple subdivisions. And I've watched as they built the infrastructure and whether it's a, a public infrastructure or private, it's done at the same time. And, you know, I think that it, as a public um, service, uh, I think we would be all better off we would be able to provide those services in all areas and also having a, a bill of rights um, for consumers. I think that's really, really important. And to have those standards, the expectation that no matter where I am in Ontario, I should have the same service as those in, in urban centers as, as rural centers uh, or in the remote communities and find ways to be able to provide those services for, for everyone. You shouldn't have to be able to drive down the road or to the next community to be able to use your cell phone um, or, you know, and I know when I, you know, drive places, I drive, driven to Ottawa, you know, on Highway 7, and there's a section, several sections, that there is no cell service at all. That should not happen in, in today's time, and it would be better served um, in the public realm. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're out of time. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, your presence here, and all the work that you continue to do on behalf of workers and all Ontarians. Thank you. And thank you for all of the work that you're doing and, and holding these hearings on this very important issue. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to be moving our to our next presenter, Matt Hatfield. Hello, Hi Matt. There. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for hosting this event. Can you hear me okay? Uh, we hear you very well. Tell us a little bit about yourself and who you're representing today. Uh, yeah, so I'm Matt Hatfields and I'm the Campaigns Director at Open Media. Uh, we're a grassroots activist community of about 300,000 people in Canada who care about making our internet and telecom systems better. We work on internet privacy, freedom of expression, and getting fair, affordable access for everyone in Canada. And fundamentally, we believe that having a highly concentrated monopolistic telecom system in private hands doesn't work. You simply can't trust profit-driven companies with that kind of overwhelming market power. They use it to squeeze their customers, 